Hello, welcome to this new module of the Osmosis course. In this lecture, you will be introduced to different aspects of seasonal and daily variability of demand and supply within an energy system, and how to correctly reflect them through the way time is represented in osmosis. Here, it is the overview of the training structure. You are now starting lecture one, focusing on time representation. In this module, you will be explained why it is important to talk about time representation and how time can be transferred into an energy system model. So, let's get started asking ourselves, why is the time representation so important in this context? The main objective of energy system planning is to ensure that in the long-term future, the supply side of an energy system will develop as to be able to always satisfy the evolution of the demand. In this planning activity, there are some issues to be considered that are linked to the fact that both demand and supply sides of the energy system vary in their evolution across different timescales. For instance, focusing on the final demand side of the system, represented on the far right side of our reference energy system. It is known that the demand varies over time in accordance with the different activities that energy users do along the day, the week and the different seasons of the year. On the graph on the right side of the slide, there is an example of how also different types of energy demands coming from different sectors can vary differently along one day. It is important to consider such variations in order to make sure that the supply side of the system is able to meet the demand in each different moment of the day, of, of the season, of the year, and whenever it is needed. Here it is an example of a seasonal variation of the demand across one representative year. The graph clearly shows how, in this case, the demand tends to be higher during the summer months of June, July, August and September. And instead, it is almost stable across the rest of the year, with a slight lower demand during springtime. Here is another example of daily variation of the demand. In this case, the data are related to different months in one year. The load curves that represent the different demands show us that during the months of April, October and December, the demand tends to be more or less stable during the central hours of the day with the peak load registered in the late afternoon and early evening of the days and the lowest load registered during the night. In July and September instead, the demand seems to be higher during the central hours of the day, with the lowest demand being recorded in the early morning. A possible explanation of this trend might be that during the summer months, the electricity is mainly used by air conditioning to cool down the living spaces during the hottest hours of the day. So, as I said, what it is important is that the system is always in balance, with the supply side being able to cope with the variability of the demand, and always managing to satisfy the demand at the net of all losses distributed along the system that are due to different technology efficiencies. In other words, the system needs to be flexible enough to meet the demand by utilizing the different technologies available in such a way that the cost is minimized as much as possible. 
If we move our focus on the supply side then, we can also notice how some supply technologies can present some variabilities in the way they can generate electricity. An example can be the hydropower dam. The supply curve of a hydro dam in red within the graph might change depending on the availability of water that is linked to the water level in the dam. Also, other renewable energy sources are typically variable in their supply depending on when natural resources are available. For instance, in this graph it is shown what can be the typical variability in electricity generation of a photovoltaic system during representative days of different months in a year, showing how, in this case, the electricity generation is directly linked to the solar irradiation, which is available during daily hours. Some variabilities then can also be related to the fluctuation of primary energy fuel prices along several years or decades. This might affect the competitiveness of some primary resources in comparison to others on the long-term planning of the energy system. Here, an example of such fluctuations over the past 150 years. In conclusion, the reason why it is important to focus on the time representation in a model is because different characteristics characteristics of both supply and demand sides of an energy system vary over different time frames, either days or weeks or seasons or even decades. As mentioned before, some examples can be the variability of energy demand, of renewable energy sources, of different supply technologies and their storage units, such as hydro dams, or even primary resources depending on fuel prices. In order to ensure that the system is always able to reach a balance and satisfy the demand side, these variations should be considered carefully when planning the future development of an energy system.